Meredith here from Sew Liberated, and today I'm going to show you how to make your very own nest sweatshirt. Let's get started. We'll start by making our quilt block. Begin by drawing a diagonal line, bisecting the squares on the wrong side of all eight of the point squares, paying attention to the grain lines. Four lines should be drawn from the top right corner to the bottom left corner, and four lines should be drawn from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. With right sides together, place one point square over a background rectangle lining up the top corners. Sew along your marked line using a regular straight stitch. Go carefully and slowly to make sure you don't stretch your fabric. Trim away the fabric above the seam to a quarter inch seam allowance and press open. Repeat this process with another point square on the other half of the rectangle so that your marked lines meet in the top center of the rectangle. As you trim and press open this second point square, you'll notice that where they meet, there's about a quarter inch of overhang at your point. This will be included in your seam allowance as you continue piecing the blocks. This is now a pieced rectangle. Repeat this process for the other three background rectangles and six point squares. Next, you'll pin a background square to a pieced rectangle along the short side, right sides together. Sew this seam at a quarter inch seam allowance and press open. You'll repeat this process with one more pieced rectangle and your two remaining background squares. You should have two pieced rectangles left after this. With right sides together, pin a pieced rectangle to your larger center square, placing the point of the triangle at the midpoint of the side of the center square. I always like to put a pin right at that point so I'm sure to take extra care as I sew over it. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and press the seam open and repeat on the other side with your last pieced rectangle. This is now your center square row. Pin the top row to your center square, right sides together with the point of the triangle at the midpoint of the center square. Take care to line up all the seams so that you have clean points. 
but know that, unlike wovens, knit fabrics will not form very crisp points. Use extra pins if needed and sew slowly in order to keep the fabric lined up. I always put a pin right where the seams meet and right at the center point so that I know to take extra care as I sew over those places. Make sure your seam allowances are pressed open to make matching the points a little bit easier. Repeat this process, pinning the last pieced rectangle background square row to the bottom of the center square row with the point of the triangle at the midpoint of the center square. Sew and press the seam allowance open. Using your quilt block pattern piece as a guide, trim your square to the correct shape for the front insert and transfer the notch marks. We will now begin the sweatshirt assembly. Pin the sleeve to the side front with right sides together, matching the single notches. I used a chalk pencil to make my notches so they might not be too visible on this recording. There are many ways to sew knits. For this tutorial, I will be basting my seams and then finishing them with an overlocker. If you do not have an overlocker, you'll want to use a stretch stitch or other stitch suitable for sewing knits and a finishing technique of your choice. Sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the seam allowances toward the back carefully. Repeat to attach the second sleeve to the second side front. Next, we will sew the yokes to the side front. Pin one front yoke to one side front, right sides facing, aligning the dots that you transferred from the pattern piece. I like to put a pin right where that dot is so I know exactly where to start and stop my sewing. Even though I am basting and serging my seams, I'm going to use a stretch stitch for this particular seam because it needs a little extra strength. Sew carefully with a quarter inch seam allowance, stopping at the dot that you marked. Don't finish this seam just yet. Repeat this process for the second yoke and second side front. Press the seam allowances towards the side front. Next, we will sew the neckband to the neckline. Bring the long, raw edges of the neckband wrong sides together, forming a long folded edge on one side and press in place. Carefully pin the neckband to the neckline, lining up the notches with the sleeve seams. The neckband is slightly shorter than the neckline to help it lie flat, so you will need to stretch it just a little as you sew. If you accidentally stretch it a little bit too much, you can just trim the extra off. Sew the neckband carefully using a quarter inch seam allowance. Finish your seam and press the neckband seam towards the body from the wrong side. If you want to top stitch the neckband, this is the time to do so. Set your sweatshirt piece aside and return to the quilt block. With right sides together, pin the front hem piece to the lower edge of the quilt block, taking care that your seam aligns with the points of the triangles on the quilt block. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and press towards the front hem. With the wearers left over the right, overlap the neck yoke pieces, lining up the center notch. The other two notches should match up with the neck band seams. Pin the top edge of the quilt block to the yoke pieces, right sides together. You may pin the yoke pieces to the quilt block as stated in the instructions. Either method is fine. 
I just found it easier to pin my yoke pieces together and then transfer the pins to my quilt block. As you're pinning, take care to pin at the points so that you have a nice crisp seam. Make sure all three layers are included in the pins. If you are worried about them slipping, it can be a good idea to baste the yolks together first and then pin the quilt block to them. Sew carefully using a quarter inch seam allowance. It is very good to go slowly on this seam and make sure all of the layers are included, especially those pointy neckband edges. Go slowly at the points of your triangles, but just remember that with knits, unlike with wovens, getting crisp points is not always possible. You can also use a walking foot or flywheel to sew this seam. Make sure you're happy with your points and with the way the block lines up before finishing the seam. Now we will attach the quilt block to the side fronts. Pin the yoke quilt block hem assembly to the side front, right sides together, lining up the remaining notches from the dots to the hem. Sew from the dot to the hem with a quarter inch seam allowance. You may want to go over your dot just a little to ensure the entire seam is sewn. Finish this seam allowance knowing that you might have a small unfinished bit of seam allowance at the very top by the neckband. Repeat for the opposite side of the side front and quilt block. Next, we will sew the underarms and side seams. Pin the underarm seams from wrist to hem, right sides together, taking care to line up the sleeve seams. Sew this long seam from wrist to hem with a quarter inch seam allowance and finish in your preferred method. Press towards the back. For my sweatshirt, I'm combining views A and B by having the quilt block, but finishing with cuffs and a banded hem. With right sides together, pin the shorter edges of each cuff together, making a tube with the cuff piece. Sew the seam of each cuff. Either press the seam allowances open, or if you've surged the seam, press to one side. Bring the unfinished edges together by starting to turn the cuff right side out, forming a tube with a folded edge on the bottom and two raw edges on the top. The ends of the inseam will meet and the seam allowance will be enclosed in the cuff. With the sleeve turned right side out, slip the folded edge of the knit cuff over the outside edge of the sleeve so that the inseam of the cuff and the seam of the sleeve meet and pin in place carefully. With the presser foot on the inside of the sleeve, sew around the circumference of the sleeve and cuff, stretching the cuff to fit. Finish the seam and press the seam allowance up towards the sleeve. Repeat this process to finish the remaining sleeve and cuff. With right sides together, pin and sew the shorter edges of the waistband together, making a tube. With wrong sides together, bring one raw edge up to meet the other so that the waistband is folded in place, just as you did with the cuff. Press the waistband carefully. With the sweatshirt turned right side out, slip the folded edge of the waistband over the bottom edge of the sweatshirt and arrange so that the waistband seam is aligned with one of the side seams. Pin in place. Sew around the circumference of the waistband and sweatshirt edge, stretching the waistband to fit. Finish the seam with your preferred method and press the seam allowance up towards the sweatshirt. following along with our nest sweatshirt sew along. I hope you had fun and I hope you love your cozy new sweatshirt.